Hello Aries, thank you for joining me here in this moment in space and time. You guys have been oh so patient as you are the last sign to receive their April general reading. So I want to thank you for that patience. Um, you know, it's one of those things that patient people are often take it for granted. And uh, I just felt the need to mention that uh, appreciation and patience are two virtues that just always go so far and i feel that both of those things definitely cross your plate from time to time and i just want to thank you for your awareness for your patience and for your appreciation all the comments and views too from the last set of readings was very overwhelming as well so you know even triple bonus thank you points uh, however far that goes um yeah you guys were last up you guys were a little bit delayed for the same reason my hands are dirty i had to do the brakes on my vehicle and so yeah i had to take a quick time out to get that job done um but back to you guys what are the energies um hidden energies hidden messages stuck energies and healing messages for aries for this being may 2017 healing messages for aries may 27th this card wants to show itself what is up justice hmm. and justice has been a theme for a few signs up uh so far um when we're looking at justice we're looking at our karmic situations justice can be a big energy this can be uh overlap from future to past lives and past to future lives however you want to look at it um making sure that we're standing behind our integrity and our authenticity is often a big theme with justice and as well for some of you this could be situations where is justice mirroring what's going on in your inner world and your outer world type thing my subscribers know the flippers and poppers we stick them back in the deck and then we uh see if they come out again in the major reading in which case we'll develop or elaborate on that even a little bit more so at present time ooh, at present time uh, aries i just want to wish you all the best of abundance prosperity comfort and joy and bliss in your life that is my intention for this reading uh please set your intention for the reading now and we'll have a look as we move through our seven major areas chakra houses wheel houses the overall energy oh my goodness we got the dirty 15 um the little devil is up here in our overall energy so when this is here this card usually sends to me is something that is binding us and it could come on several planes if it is in the physical plane this is like something that is like we're addicted to somebody's can't get off the junk so to speak or somebody just can't get their head around a certain um thing that's got them tied down nicotine is a big one that affects a lot of people some of you may just have a desire to like really be getting healthy um and certain things could definitely be holding you back and for each one of you this this energy is going to be different. This is going to apply to something that is very personal to you. They say we all have an infinite um, personal relationship with God. And we also have an infinite personal relationship with ourselves. And ourselves being metaphorical for this being the tendencies, subconscious or conscious, that we have. Are things that do not allow us to grow, to be in a place of expansion or ascension this is an indication that you know you're doing something wrong for some of you if you are in situations where people are being emotionally verbally physically hurt or upset you know at the hands of someone else my heart goes out to you and these are situations if you can help heal them then actively do it in ways that are just so justice is definitely has a role to play in this as well for that message i feel some is relevant if for some of you this may be uh thinking you might just be wanting to conduct an intervention for somebody important to you in your life or as well you may be seeing that certain things that you are doing are no longer serving you no longer allowing you to be that in that point of expansion as i mentioned okay no need to be scared here i had one lady comment that she was scared of the little uh ferdinand the sugar skull over here and she was gonna unsubscribe because it was there i said there's no need to be scared of these things when we're in touch with our angels our spirit guides and our higher selves uh or whatever deity um that we uh, believe in eternal almighty a sovereign type source universal type energy that's above us there's never any need to be afraid because fear in its purest sense is only just the expectation of future pain and if there's nothing that can hurt us that we're giving power to hurt us in our lives then we there's no need for us to ever be fear afraid afeared okay I used to say afeared when i was a little kid 
Now let's look at our root chakra here, Aries. We've got two pentacles up. A lot of readers see that this is the card of playfulness. And here when it shows up in root chakra, I think it definitely does speak to our playfulness. Our playful attitudes about, you know, we know life is serious. We know our careers are important to us and we know that our responsibilities mean the world to us and the people around us. But I believe, Aries, you guys are in a good place to be somewhat playful with that type of energy. Like, it is serious, but it shows that you're not taking it too seriously until, you know, something might come about where you have to take it seriously. But in order to sort of alleviate yourselves of the common everyday anxieties and stressors that normal people that are fighting to keep the domestic bliss while paying the bills, while making everybody else around them all happy, it tends to get to them. It seems like you guys are doing a good job of that proverbial a juggling act to keep that stress. Um, I feel the need to say somebody might be storing their stress in their back and there may be a need to get into some physical practices of yoga or stretching or Pilates or, or go out and see a, a deep tissue um, acupuncturist to, to take care of your back. It says that the power to heal yourself is within your reach at this time. But get playful in the energy. And again, we're alleviating fear with two of pentacles. We're realizing here that, you know, if we drop the proverbial ball on something, it may not be the end of the world and it may actually be necessary to focus ourselves a little bit more clearly on whatever the more important of the two things is. Deuces are always decisions. Uh, and in this case, it seems like even if you have serious scheduling issues or things at hand, you guys are going to be approaching it with a very playful type attitude. So a good energy to see up there in grounding with two of pentacles. Make sure you're checking your day planner, though. Don't be double booking yourself. I feel that's an important message for somebody listening as well. It could be a situation where you're double booked. Okay, one chakra up in the sacral area, our creative center, we have four of swords. And this traditionally is the card of rest and rejuvenation. This is the card of pondering, of meditating, of wondering, okay? Um, so when we see this card up here with four of swords, perhaps some of us are just like maybe resting, maybe we're... we're we were very busy through April, I feel, and maybe this time of May, this sun in Taurus now, and the little bit of a slower pace, the kind of one foot in, four in front of the other type energy, and everybody kind of going to a place of independence, even if you are in interdependent relationships or in a family structure, you'll notice that people around you are, um, you know, it's not selfishness, but it's very independent energy. It's kind of a slow moving, everybody's setting their own pace right now, and you might be noticing a lot of people getting in your way from time to time but with this energy Aries I feel you guys are going to be able to kind of be in this playful energy and when you need to withdraw from it when you need to sort of take a rest from the busyness of everyday life of the the proverbial juggling act that is keeping all of our responsibilities and our schedule very linear and progressive you guys are going to need to make sure that you guys are taking your rest you guys are um, you know putting your turning your phone off or putting it on silent uh, when you need to. Four of Swords is a very relevant information uh, card for me in 2017 in this age of technology here is that, you know, if we're doing four things, it's probably one too many things. And a lot of times that fourth thing is our technology. It is the phone that we're handling maybe while we're eating, or it is the fact that, you know, we're laying to bed at night and maybe it is only a few inches away from our skull, from our cranium, right? And they say... And I'm not just talking about tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists, but there are bona fide legitimate people in the science community that says this this technology should be nowhere near your cranium or your noggin. Or uh, for those of you keeping your phone in your jeans pockets, uh, get it away from your pee pee and your ding ding uh, or your JJ just because it's not a healthy energy to have near those type of organs. And I know it's weird. Bear with me, people. But that is a message I feel that we need to get out with this Four of Swords up at that. And for those of you that know where your sacral chakra is, one step up above your tailbone, you know what I mean when I say those things and those kind of things. Put the phone to rest and make sure you guys yourselves are getting to rest, okay? Because uh, maybe some of you have this. Uh, this could be reminiscent of, because when people talk about these addictions and these dependencies, they have to always talk about the bad stuff, like mm, pornography, mm, heroin, mm, marijuana, mm, you know, a vodka and seven, right? But it could be something that, you know, the establishment in mainstream society is kind of like pushing on us anyway, saying, well, you know, everybody's addicted to their phone. The only time it's not 
um, you know, at their side is maybe when it's charging, you know, type thing. So maybe somebody is a little bit too addicted to tech uh, for, for something or another. Just felt that that message related back to that overall energy. Okay, what has you bound? Text messaging, what has you bound? So far, these energies are looking really good, Aries. It's looking like playfulness. It's looking like rest, which I know me personally, if when I feel those energies, right now I'm feeling alleviated. I'm feeling lighthearted and, excuse me, full of rest. Maybe a little bit choked up too. So let's we'll see what that's about. Now, solar plexus, we got a sun reversal card. <clears throat> now, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm really going to need to take a drink here. I'm interested to see what's up in Throat Shocker for you guys. Again, thanks for your patience here, Aries. We've got the sun card reversed up in your solar plexus. It's a great energy to see that. And the reversal here is not a big deal because the sun is another one of those things that's round. It's a ball. Like reverse forward, it doesn't really matter because the sun is round. You got to take it how it is. Um, the sun speaks to permanence. The sun speaks to uh, good, warm, heartfelt energies. So to see this card up in the solar plexus, one way or the other, it shows that whatever you guys are working towards, there is going to be a certain amount of success or there is going to be some sort of um, uh, long-term fulfillment coming from wherever it is you guys are directing your energies or however you're feeling about a certain situation. The only thing in the subtle difference in the reversal is, is that whatever you are expecting to come your way or hoping is going to come your way may be just a little bit delayed or it may be requiring a little bit extra work than you had originally planned on doing. Some of you may just have plans where you actually are uh, waiting on weather. You actually are waiting on uh, situations to open up in certain geographical locations, I feel. This sun reverse also could mean, could speak to me about those of you that uh, work in fields of um, ecology, uh, environment, biologists, uh, people of this nature that are really going to have a very uh, harmonious or good spring and summer season coming forward for them. All right. Uh, and the sun reversed here. Look at this. In in terms of this, what we see is maybe there are some adrenaline junkies out there, some adventure seekers. And some of you, you're going to have to kind of watch like uh, that you're not... Uh, at risk of losing friendship, just do be, you're wanting to do too much, and other people are not moving at that quick pace. Maybe that Taurus and Sun and Taurus energy I spoke about earlier. Maybe you guys are just kind of like moving through very quickly, and some other people are kind of wondering what's up with you at present time. Just going to ask for a quick clarifier as to why the Sun is there in solar plexus. Gut instincts is usually pretty easy for me to feel, but the Sun is a major energy. Like it is a major, major energy to see. And it's good because that chakra is a very important one. Yeah, look at this. We've got the nature. We've got the mountain climbers. We've got the people that are wanting to break free from the ordinary 9 to 5 concrete jungle. Get out. Get smelling the pine trees. Get out. Get feeling the earth underneath your feet and the rocks in your hands. Taking those beautiful pictures and selfies out in nature. Um, and for some of you, even this is some adrenaline junkie type stuff. Maybe you guys are going rock climbing. Maybe you guys are... Taking up a new activity uh, could be hunting, fishing, could be rock climbing, could be just as simple as hiking and, and geocaching, whatever it may be. Get yourself out of the city when the weather warms up. Get yourself out into nature. Solar plexus, this means the being is desiring it. If you're, ba if you're battling certain addictions, maybe it's partying too much, cigarettes, alcoholism, these cards now are saying the cure, a good cure, a good healing energy to that is to listen to your body and to remove yourself from maybe the nightclub situation, uh, go out camping if you're typically not the person that spend, spends your paycheck at the at the pub or the nightclub, maybe set some aside and go out camping and that kind of thing uh, will get you further away from the typical temptations of, of and those healing type energies, okay? Nature can help you guys huge at that. All right, now I can see the reason why that 15 major is up because here in Heart of Hearts, we've got A of Swords and it is straight up. So unfortunately, this is a victim type energy mentality. Some of you may really be struggling um, with lovers at this time and it could be uh, lovers of an air sign, Gemini, Aquarius, um, or the other one there. Jeez, uh, I can't even think, Libra. Eight of Swords energy it usually means that we're feeling trapped um, by circumstance and circumstance and our own limited vision in a lot of decks this lady in the eight of swords or the person in the eight of swords has a blindfold on which means 
and the blindfold is a metaphor of the veil that currently exists between them perceiving their own power and being able to get themselves out of a particular circumstance of a situation or as a greater situation as a whole. To see this A of Swords up in a heart of hearts, some of you I really feel are on this plot line of becoming the best version of yourself and the physical health being a major player in this now with Four of Swords coming into Eight of Swords. We're wanting to, maybe some of us are just at an age where it's like, um, you know, we're maturing past uh, bar star stage, uh, but there's an inability to let it go because maybe our social life means very much to us and, and our friends and our little getaways and the escapes that we have, the little things that we do to treat ourselves, to get the endorphin moving through the brain, you know, whether it may be smoking, whether it may be, uh, you know, going down to the video store and renting a sort of unsavory video, whatever it might be. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life because I'm not your dad. But A of Swords and Heart of Hearts says is that some of you now have gotten glimpses of the bigger picture. Some of you now have gotten glimpses to maybe what some of your friends have already woken up to and the fact that they are packing up the car and the kids and potentially a wife or gee, maybe just a puppy dog and, and heading out and getting out of the city and getting out of, uh, you know, um, you know, monster truck jam at the, uh, the Century Stadium, you know, or whatever it might be, those those berating messages from, you know, technology and from advertisement and things like that may just be wearing very thin on you for some of you mentally, all right? And the heart is kind of crying out, being like, get me out of this energy, get me out of these, like, thought patterns and these cyclical ways of, of thinking and perceiving and, like, the subliminal brainwashing that goes on with us, a lot of that kind of stuff, okay? So that message is running fluent there for Eight of Swords. Um, I thought there may be some relationship overtones to this reading, but I haven't seen anything yet in the lower chakras. Um, please be sure to let me know uh, through your feedback. Your comments mean so much to me. Uh, if there is something there that I like didn't touch on or missed out, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And speaking of uh, resonating with certain things, here's temperance up in our throat chakra, our communication. So my throat got stuck earlier, but I'm feeling still very good about the energies in this reading, Aries. And now to see this card is definitely a reinforcement. So maybe the relationship things that I spelt the need to, to speak to is that some of you are very much in harmony with where you're at on an emotional level. We These are the first cups now in this, in this card that we've seen so far in this reading. And with that, these two cups are being balanced out. These two cups are being harmoniously displayed, emptied and filled so that it shows, reflects how... We are adaptable to move our energies into alignment with the things that we want. And typically it is in line with the things of what other people are doing, the things going on around us as well. Going with the flow type energy, being in the right place at the right time to score or to, uh, you know, um, be the bearer of good news or, or be the recipient of good news with temperance card. And the news is this good news is something I feel that is going to be coming through a spoken word or something that is heard, something that is conveyed through a type of message. Some of you may actually be waiting on a phone call. Some of you may actually be waiting to hear about a big life-changing energy and event. And it almost feels like when we have justice, we have temperance, and we see these two cards up like this, some of you may be waiting to hear, and you may not be the direct person involved, but it may affect you in some uh, way, or you possibly could be the direct person involved, of some sort of life-altering, life-changing news. Uh, or message that you know is coming either one way or the other. And that's why I say this might not be you because it's almost like this is beyond you. This is not something that you can uh, actively like hit a button or, you know, change on your own. It's like you're waiting on the message, so to speak. But you're doing so in great hopes and in great faith. Some of you may be very worried that the news is going to be bad. Um, but some of you, the feeling here is, is that if you can talk to somebody about this while you're waiting for this news, if you can do a lot of like maybe praying or, or good meditative work just to prepare yourself in case the news is bad, it shows that you guys are going to be remaining balanced and be coming up on top. And this could be happening while you're, you're, you're meditating, right? Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. 
when I get this like this, and now I'm seeing this up in this energy, some of this could be uh, health-related news. Some of this is definitely going to be situations where maybe you uh, were involved in some things or you know, the previous addictions that you had had for the longer term and you're kind of waking up to how much they've affected your body and maybe you are waiting on certain medical news at present time. And so just, you know, be in a situation, I can't see into your own personal situations about what's going to happen, but just kind of realize like, prepare yourself for for good or or for for ill okay now we've got chariot and that message is just not going to be for everyone either okay so just take what you can from these readings leave the rest most of the youtube readers that do general uh readings will say that right they all say oh check your sun moon and rising signs right and, you know i don't even have to say that to you guys you know what you're doing right now Third eye, soul searching, we've got chariot car reverse. So something has come to a halt, a standstill. Something is not uh, moving forward in terms of our ascension process. And we set it off the top of the reading, right? We said whatever this is in this overall energy that's got you feeling bound is got you to a point where you're not able to expand. You're not able to uh, grow. And, you know, with the sun energy, with the universe, everything around us is always in a constant state of expansion and that is due to the power of love and the message i feel here is that to get this going some of us really need to be reminded of how important it is when we get in touch with our emotional selves and to love ourselves and this isn't by like going and getting a pedicure maybe yeah go get a massage or go and treat yourself to something really nice but this is the stuff that comes at nighttime in terms of affirmations honestly telling yourself audibly audibly that means out loud, that you love yourself when you look in your mirror and that you're happy with yourself just the way you are. If you're trying to change something up about yourself uh, on those deeper levels, if you're trying to become a better person, say karmically in your dealings with other people, if you maybe feel like you've been a little bit uh, bullyish or miserly too much in your in your like sort of white noise, I call them white noise relationships. These are the people that are not super meaningful in your life, people you have to deal with, but you're sort of fond of but, you know, if they went one way or the other, it wouldn't really matter in the outcome. But we still affect each other in terms of these timelines and these pathways. Now, not saying that this is bad news or anything. We have a couple worrisome cards, but the energy here is overall good. You guys are might just having be having to take a time out uh, to reflect here, to really um, make sure that you are happy with yourself and the way you're treating other people. Let's not forget, we had that justice card pop out. Let's not forget that, you know, a lot of the times if we're looking to overcome something about ourselves that we don't like, one, we talked about getting out in nature to help alleviate that, but also one of the things we can do is be in that mentality where we're, we're looking at other people as reflections of us. Maybe there's something we don't like about another person that we have to deal with in our day-to-day -day life, but that thing that we don't like about that person is something that we do, is something that we, is also present in our personalities. So then that kind of self-realization, and you can improve your relate, by improving your relationship with said person, you essentially prove, improve your relationship with yourself, and the self-love comes through, and we're not feeling so mm, dismayed or so, you know, powerful powerless against uh you know our self-esteem our self-image even those kind of things perhaps for some of the younger viewers that are up okay long-winded what's up from source two of wands yes excellent aries i knew this reading had a good feeling i knew here that the positivity that the optimism that the um hope faith uh, and joy outweighed all of the negative concern in this. And I'm not belittling it. I know some of you guys probably have some serious issues at hand coming up in May, but the Two of Wands feeling is, is that um, whatever that is coming your way has been sort of co-created to a point. And this reading, this messenger, this Two of Wands card is here to let you know or here to always remind you that we continue to learn how to be better co-creators with the universe with what's in front of us and with what's inside us uh, for the most possible harmony to get us back into that place of expansion. Because when you hear other readers talk about manifesting things in your life or creating things in your life, the reason that happens is because we are in a state of expansion with our current environment. 
Not everybody knows how to open up their third eye. Not everybody knows how to open up their heart chakra. Some people, uh, they have, you know, years of dust and, and smoke and rust over top of that heart chakra. And the picture of the chakras is like kind of a spinning wheel, right? Where it's like, it's kind of ground to a halt and stop there. Like the old TikTok from the Wizard of Oz or whatever. You know, it just needs, it needs to get going again. It needs a little bit of oil so that, you know, when the heart comes through, it can, we can get that chakra moving again and that is that expansion that i'm talking about and here i'll point this out this guy in this two of wands he's got a, he's got a wand in his hand this other one's leaning up against the pillar but he's actually using you know uh, and, uh, my star wars fans will love this the force to like bring that lightsaber to him to bring that wand to him and of course like um telekinesis uh or what is they what do they call that where you just bend spoons and stuff like that that's kind of we're not talking about that level of of stuff although this is the metaphor that says if you want to make it happen let's refine ourselves like a diamond in a furnace let's make ourselves the best version of we can be and then this second one is the metaphor of what it is in our environment that we're hoping to change that we're hoping to manipulate and not manipulate in a bad word it isn't manipulative but manipulate on a you know the 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 regular meaning of the word to change it to to adapt it to our to what we want it to be okay that's when that comes is after the inner work is done now the environment is in a constant state of expansion and now getting rid of the bad things being in harmony and balance and pulling in the good things and this is your powerhouse believe it or not aries this playful energy and this and how we're dealing with others if we're playful with others if we're not too critical not too harsh with others i believe this is the cornerstone this is going to be the footsteps in may that some of you are going to be looking to um in terms of like making self-realizations and making just for happy harmonious environments and let's make it sure when we're at home at night and we're thinking we got these swords going on all our mental activity maybe when we're alone that we can use we can go back we can reflect on the day and use our happy playful interactions to put us in a nice place of consciousness as we're falling asleep and then this inner work can happen in through our dreams and in through our subconscious and maybe we can get uh these addictions taken care of or finally get to a place where we said i've had it uh mad as hell i'm not going to take it anymore and i'm not going to deal with whatever this is that's dogging me right okay so let's see what's up from enchanted map uh oracle reading oh man coming apart card number 46 all right now we have like uh, two mirrored or twins are sort of looking in different re relations. This is very yin-yang type energy, um, mirroring type energy. Uh, for those of you that may that were here, maybe for, you know, these are generally readings. Sometimes love comes forward, sometimes it doesn't. And I, I had the hint a little bit earlier to be talking about relationships. The only hints of it that I got were when we were dealing with other people's issues, maybe in that devil card, and you know, really wanting to alleviate some sort of veil when it comes to the power that somebody else has over us. So we talked about the white noise relationships, and I think we're going to keep that as a theme. If you got a significant other in your life, um, or that you came here to find out about, or you're doing some crossover, this may be particularly for, for Aries, that you just kind of need to know that like, Everybody in our relationships, no matter how serious the relationship is, the universe source puts people in our lives for a reason. And how close they draw to us is how directly of a mirror of that source wants us to wake up to, to realize, to, to keep that expansion going, to be in a state of awareness and in better ourselves. Okay, I'll shut up now. I'm just going to read from the book on this card. Number 46, Coming Apart. Let's just see here. We'll put it a little closer for you guys and don't have to get too close to your computer screen. Uh, quote, now is the time to take separate paths. The coming apart card is a sign to put an end to what no, is no longer working for you. Has a commitment been broken? Perhaps you need to break a promise or change course because you took on more than you could handle. This is a perfect time to reassess your goals and values. Are your actions in alignment with what you believe in? Have you created a partnership that is not mutually beneficial? Separation, disillusion, and dispersion are all in focus now. If someone wishes to break away from you, then don't chase that. Don't chase that relationship. Don't chase that person out of a sense of fear. The price you'll pay will be not be worth the prize. Separation at this time brings good fortune. Okay, 
So I think it, it, it capitalized on some of the things we talked about here. And I think it really brings me back to this four of swords energy where if you just are feeling like you need to be alone to be with yourself from time to time to like get what you're feeling straight. If somebody's energy has been a little bit dominating, then let's do that. Um, by no means am I saying is this coming apart. Do you just like end, a, you know, a long term emotional bonded bondage type relationship unless you are absolutely ready Aries if you know exactly that it's been far too long and you want out may yes may it could be a grander time I probably didn't pick up on it because you've already you already knew it you we're looking for the hidden messages this is something that you are already knowing and the coming apart is maybe just giving you that extra little last little push to do that okay but again, we've got the temperance up here. Let's really take May to slow down and start seeing people as reflections of ourselves. And you may notice that your interpersonal relationships around you are getting so much better. If somebody's not giving you the time of day, darn skippy. Don't give them the time of day or it's time to start them to make them guessing. All right. We got a couple deuces over here. A lot of choices coming up for you guys in May. Uh, I feel Aries. And that's what we pulled out from these cards in this May reading. All right. Know that I love you all. and We'll see you next time.